Fantasy Football League. Frank, Frank, will you leave the rubbish? Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, um, this week's show, we'll be meeting guest managers Roy Hattersley and John Moxon. And later in Phoenix with the Flames, we'll be recreating English football's greatest moment from Wembley 1966. And we'll be saying a big hello to Graham Taylor. <laughs> stop! <laughs> no need for that, was it? Zero, zero. <laughs> But first, some things we found out from watching football this week. It seems that the untimely death of Telly Savalas may have been caused by shock after he was confronted by a particularly distressing sight last Saturday afternoon. <laughs> and something I heard while watching Match of the Day made me wonder, is all the vocal support for Alan Ball from Southampton fans genuine or is it just ventriloquism? Lips no, not at all. Fantastic. The injury crisis at Liverpool was made even worse this week when Julian Dix's brain exploded. <laughs> <laughs> and Ray Wilkins made it clear just why he has been talked about as a candidate for the England job with this piece of inspired critical analysis. Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed it, Fred. I thought it was a good game. I think what actually helps is that it's been played in a football stadium. <laughs> It does really, help, though. It, does it really help. helps. Yeah. An really airport's helps. no good, is it, generally? <laughs> so, this is the third week we've been on now, and the fact is, my dad still doesn't know how to play fantasy football. He's still yeah. sitting at home saying things like, but where do they get this £20 million from? And do saves count for anything? Mother! <laughs> right? So, for my dad, Colin Brian Baddiel, we're going to show the effect that one guy... It's his name, all right? <laughs> doesn't normally get a laugh. <laughs> well, <sometimes. laughs> We're going to show the effect that one goal had on this week's Fantasy League table. This is Alan Shearer's goal for Blackburn against Leeds. There it is. <laughs> Cracker. It was a cracking goal. So now we'll, we'll look at the effect this had on our Fantasy League team. So, first of all, we've got Graham Lasso crossing the ball. So he gets two points for an assist. And that's two points to Bob Mortimer's Beg Test team. Yep. <laughs> Shearer heads it in, so that's three points for Andrew Ridgely's The Beautiful Game FC. And of course, the whole of the Leeds defenders all lose one point. So there's number 22, David Kelly. He loses a point there for Roddy Doyle's Dublin Munchen Gladback. Yep. Tony DeRigo concedes one for Mandy Smith's The Muswell Babes. And Newsom there at 16, he loses the point for Peter Cook, Golders, Greenbacks. And Chris Fergler, who's going up there with Alan Shearer, he coughs uh, Basil Brush PSV Boom Boom one point. Bad news for Basil. And finally, the goalkeeper, Beanie, loses a point for Roy Hattersley's team. So there you are, one goal in the real football world affects seven different fantasy league managers. Incredible. Amazing. So let's have a look at how that goal and all the other goals scored this week made a difference <laughs> to the fantasy football league you table. You were TV presenter I then. Did it, it needs a bit, you know, that bit of music they have on Match of the Day when they have the goals round. Yeah. Well, that's Roy Hattersley's team, the critics, goes top with two goals from Ian Rush, assists from Keenan Sinton, and a clean sheet from Man United's Paul Parker. Eddie Large's team swales out City. Originally Ladbrokes 20 to 1 outsider has frightened the bookies by moving to fifth place. He scored 10 points this week, including an assist from his assistant manager's son, Nicky Somerby. And for the third week running, Mandy Smith stays at the bottom, which is bad news for her. And also bad news for Norman and Joe from the Star Pub in East Sussex, who have written to us complaining that they've drawn Mandy in their pub sweep. It's all right, all right, thank you. Good tune, though, I like that. Oh dear, and do you know someone went into Ladbrokes this Saturday morning, this is absolutely true, and they put 500 quid on Andrew Ridgely. Mm. Was it George Michael? By any chance? I don't think so. No. <laughs> this was to win the British Grand Prix. Oh, right. Very unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And they also, this is again absolutely true, put 500 quid on you Did to they? win the Fantasy League. That's a good bet, I think. Anyway, where's the guest manager? No, they're late. Let's, let's watch a bit of football. Oh no, you know what'll happen. Well, oh yeah. Oh, all right, well, we'll watch something else. Okay. And now on BBC One, 
Let bid in trading places when Jamie Lee Curtis takes her top off. <laughs> Looks like John Motson. <laughs> Weather's turned a bit, actually. Oh, well, let him. You can let him in. <laughs> no rush. <isn't> <laughs> now nah, go on, I'll let him in. All right. John. Sorry, John, just sit yourself down. We're just watching a tiny little thing on the telly. Just see how it's Sorry about that. Not, not that tiny. That's to be fair. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, can you no! believe it? I can't believe Doesn't it. Doesn't always happen, John, when you're watching soft pornography? Every time. <laughs> oh, no, it's Roy Hattersley. Roy Hattersley! Roy, let me take your coat. <laughs> there you are. Oh, well, thanks very much. And we're a bit honoured with your presence this week, Roy, because you are top of the league. Absolutely. Welcome on. Completely spontaneous. So you've got your <laughs> big Thank support you. for Roy Hattersley. So, well, Roy, we love, we love you as well, John. So. We, are, we are very, very honoured that you're here as a top of the league. But before we go into detail about your team, I know this isn't this is your life or anything, but do you recognise this voice? If there's anything that does irritate me, it's someone like Roy Hattersley <laughs> making comments that he's made that are factually incorrect. And I think he owes, owes me a very, very big apology. <laughs> You course. haven't seen him for four years! <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Yeah. sorry it was, of course, Neil Kinnock. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, if there were a bit of swearing in it, I would have thought it was Graham Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea of him asking me to apologise. The rest of the country is asking him, to, him to apologise yeah. for what happened to the last... But can you tell us, uh, Roy, what, what he's so upset about? I said that Graham Taylor hadn't been terribly good at managing some of the more difficult England players, particularly Gaza. Yeah, and not been terribly good at managing any of the players as well. <laughs> work out. And I think, it, I mean, I'm not the first person to have said that he uh, treated Gaza in a way which Gaza didn't enjoy. Mm. And members of the England squad were talking about it quite openly. They talked to me about it. And Mr uh, Taylor said it's not true. You've had inside info? You've had inside information. Well, uh, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so who's the Sheffield Wednesday playing? No, half, the Sheffield, <laughs> half the Sheffield Wednesday team on England books. Mm. Yeah. So you're yeah. not going to give him the big apologies after? I don't think so, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> did, you, did you watch the documentary? No, I didn't. I, I'm oh, it was, it was brilliant. Did, yeah. did anyone, anyone here see the uh, Graham Taylor documentary? Anyone in our audience? Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 what did you think? What's the general opinion, good or bad? Yeah, Phil Neal. Did everyone notice that Phil Neal just sat there and went, yes, boss, yeah, boss, you're right, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Except when Graham Taylor said, do I not like that? <laughs> <laughs> and Phil Neal went, what? <laughs> Dramatically, what do you mean? <laughs> that was when he'd moved into anagrams. So just, just one point about what Graham Taylor has said about you is that he does say in his quote on Radio 5, he says, what does Roy Hadsley, a supporter, yeah. know about it all, which I think <laughs> really... And here were you and me thinking supporters were quite important to the game yeah. of football, yes. And not only are you a supporter, a very avid one, you're also a very good manager. Of course, he should have said Shush, Roy Hattersley, top of the fantasy league, yeah, you'll have them off is going to take it. over the England management. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. But I mean, there's a serious point about supporters. Supporters won't make this bloody game. Mm. And uh, if the England manager deceits... Well, that's true, well, that's true isn't, isn't it? Well, that's true. Isn't it right? I think we've got a load of supporters here saying, oh, no, we don't. We're, not very <laughs> <important."> <laughs> We're <laughs> rubbish, actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got a man who stands there naked every week just to prove how keen he is. And if you get that sort well, of... Well, I've, I've got a man who does that as well, though, in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so. We have actually, we have actually got a, a very famous Sheffield Wednesday fan in today. This man is known as Tango Man. Uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> Hey, Tango Man! Tango Man! Tango Man! Where are you from, mate? Wolverhampton. From Wolverhampton? Yes. 
So uh, I'll just I'll be the wanderer. I'll be the wanderer. Be the wanderer. wanderer. Yeah. So uh, if the wind won't mind, so you'll make no sense. I'm going to go all the way up there. What are you? What's the wall? Go to the back in. <laughs> you can't really go out your football round there when you've got Sheffield Wednesday up the road. It's so far so bad again. Can well, you? You don't want to go all the way up the road, do you? You want to go around the corner? You want to go to the wall? Do you want to watch the walls next season when they come up to the Premier Division anyway? We can get two miles up the road and watch the walls well, playing Wednesday. Well, that's that sort of thing. No, but but but. There's people sitting at home in the black country now saying, I don't know why they're applauding that, there's only talking. <laughs> when, w have you always been a football fan, Roy? Sure, I, I mean, I was brought up really within spitting distance of Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play football at school? Roy? Yeah. Badly. Really? <laughs> I don't know if I, any of you had this one, but when I played at school, like, there was well, this kid at my school who was much older and bigger than the rest of us, right? But he always forced his way into the game. He always wanted to play, even though he was rubbish. Is this him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who he was. Minnie had, Min had gone by then. <laughs> John, moving on, moving on to you. Um, wh when did you first start to become interested in football? Oh, I was about um, five years old, and my father took me to see Charlton play at the Valley. And you were still interested in football after <laughs> that? That's amazing. <laughs> and where am I this week? At the Valley watching Charlton. Are so you? Not much changes, does it? Oh, mm -hmm. the memories will come flooding back, John. Well, you, well, well you, John, you're, you're known uh, as one of the greatest statistical brains in the game. What, more than Stato? Well, that's know. the thing. Stato is known as one of the greatest statistical brains oh, in, in the game. Oh, Battle of the Giants. And I wonder if you mind locking horns in our living room over well, a couple of Well, not with Ken Bates watching. I don't want to lock <laughs> Well, OK, well, we'll put Ken away just for the moment. And I wonder if you'd like to go for, for a couple of questions. First one to the answer. God, dear, where's Stato? Oh, he's he's over there. Right. Oh, this is exciting. OK, which year did Manchester United first win the FA Cup? 1909. Oh! Oh, oh Stato, in like lightning! <laughs> We don't get points deducted, Roy, by the way, in the league for this. This is an outside competition. We can Bristol City, the team of the week. It's best of three. Best of three, sorry. All right, well, he knows, he knows it's against Bristol City, which is going to be a tiebreaker, so we'll go for a different one. Who scored Italy's equaliser in the 1970 World Cup final? Roberto Bonasega. Oh, he was in there again. He's in there again. He knows That's 2 0. <laughs> Well, that's that. <laughs> oh, that's it. We don't get the third question. Oh, I remember the third question. That was a fix, John, don't you? Well, it was a bit fix, quick, wasn't it? Do you think it was a fix? A fix. Yeah. Oh, this, but this man... Fix. Fix. Oh, it's controversial from Roy. It was not fixed. Do you want to ask the last question? Um, what was the result of the 1946 Cup final, and who scored? Charlton won Derby 4. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So let's have a look at your teams to begin with. Roy's team, he's top of the league, so let's have a look at his team to begin with. That's called the Critics. Um, why are they called the Critics, Roy? Well, I was sitting in my office um, writing an introduction to a little book that comes out in three weeks' time, available for more good books. <laughs> oh, the um, first plug on Best I, I was reading a line by T.S. Eliot which said, literary criticism is the proper pastime of the civilised mind. Mm. And I thought, no, it bloody isn't. <laughs> Football is the proper pastime of the civilised mind. At this moment, my secretary came in and said they want a title, want a name for the team, so the critics it was. While we're on the literary subject, if we bring your team up again, I notice you've got Ian Crook playing for you, and he's one of a number of players who play for Norwich who sound like Dickensian characters. Now, it does, because you could have a whole sentence of Dickens that just went, I left Mr Ullathorne's house to go and seek legal advice from the firm of Culver House and Butterworth. <laughs> <laughs> there, I met their butler, Woodthorpe, I said. <laughs> I said, I'm very thirsty, go and get me a cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> Your only Sheffield Wednesday player is Andy Sinton, is that not right? No. Got, oh, can I have another? Yeah, excuse, I'll just take the, take the rubbish out. I'll be Who's back, your fullback? Nielsen, right back. Oh, right. But Sinton's um, probably your star Sheffield Wednesday player that you've got. And wasn't, wasn't performing at the beginning of the season, but he's had a good last two or three matches and produced three or four assists. Right. I don't think Sinton's scored for Wednesday all season. Hasn't he? Not, not all season. Do you think he was a good buy yeah, in general? Yeah. 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 One? Newcastle, Norwich. One. 
Stuart Newcastle. Newcastle. Have we got any footage of him at all? Uh, any footage of Andy Sinton there? He's not the season we expect. Laughing at one of Graham Taylor's jokes. And what do you think of him, John? Well, I've got it. Oh, oh, I'll I'll see. Every time I'm going to speak, I'm going As soon as you start to speak, it's ridiculous at this time of night. Absolutely absurd. Oh, look, it's Andy Stinton. Sinton. Hello, nice to meet you. Has anyone got any questions for, for Andy Sinton? Mate, it just suddenly occurred to me how you ever got in this fo England football team. I just wondered why you thought you got in. Why I got in? Because yeah. Graham Taylor obviously knew what he was doing. Did you actually rate yourself as a player? I mean, Do you I have confidence yourself? in yourself as a player? Oh, well, of course, you see. I mean, I don't know if you noticed me on the, uh, on the documentary the other night. I was the one that was just looking over his shoulder and says, saying, what does do I not like that mean? <laughs> it's funny because I think you're absolutely crap. Do you really? Yeah. Outside. <laughs> Tango, man, can you uh, steam off? Sorted. There you go. <laughs> right. Good old Tango. Well, I thank gonna, you, Andy. I was going to shoot off. So, boss, um, all the best. We'll, we'll all show. The best. We're going to win the league, mate. Do the business mate, on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, tomorrow. and I'll be, I'll, be at the, uh, I'll be at the bridge tomorrow. So yes. you'll be in trouble. All right, we'll see you, Andy. All okay, the best. then. Say bye, everybody. See you, Tango. <laughs> Yes, all right, all right, all right, yes, yes, not Frank in a week. And, blimey, Andy Sinton turning up like that, isn't that extraordinary? Sorry, yeah. It all happens here. So, let's have, let's have John's team up now. It's time to have a look at John's team, I think. There it is. It's called... Oh, hey, Frank, guess who you just missed? <laughs> who? Andy Sinton. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, he was just round here. Andy Sinton was in there? Yeah, yeah, you might just see him. Oh, no. Shut the door, Frank. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bloody freezing outside. Well, that's absolutely unbelievable. I would like to have seen him. Good well, looking lad, I've always thought. No, he looked really ugly, I thought. Terrible. Oh. <laughs> what was we talking about? Oh, do you know what I wanted to ask Roy about? Oh. oh Hello? Yeah, I'll, well, you know, so am I. Yeah, well, next time, maybe. Yeah. Cheers. Andy Sinton just saying he's sorry you missed me. <laughs> it's not all these myths this year, I'll tell you. Is it really? <laughs> You've also... Oh. Tell Roy Atherton to what? <laughs> <laughs> that was Andy Sinton again, he's very upset. I thought it might have been Graham Taylor. No, it oh, wasn't no. Graham Taylor. Well, he wasn't swearing. So who, who else have you got? You've got... Oh, the, sorry. Chris Sutton scored twice for me at West Ham on Monday night. That moved us up in you the... You know league. he's on 500 pounds of goal at the so moment. So I'm told, yes. Did you pay him that? I think they're trying to get on to 500 pounds of goal for commentating. Right. <laughs> Yeah. How many goals has Chris Sutton got for you now? <laughs> <laughs> he's got how many? Three. Three Sorry, goals, 11 Sato. points, right. one assist. Do you think he's a quality player, Chris Sutton? I would say, I paid a lot of money for him, so I've got to say he is, yes. Absolutely, right. yeah. Well, you're just sticking with that. Though. I'm sticking with him, and I've got Holdsworth of Wimbledon up front with him. So yeah, I'm Holdsworth. Aren't you a bit slightly worried about you know, the way that Wimbledon get discredited and stuff, and the way they play? You well, I was worried very worried when he got three goals the other week, and then I found out it was an FA Cup tie, and it didn't count. <laughs> right, it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't make me very happy. Count. We got a little clip, actually, of Dean Holdsworth chasing after one of Billy Jones's shorter through balls here. Oh, right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> He actually, uh, <laughs> oh, what? I don't yeah. think he ever got there. It was in the Arctic Circle somewhere. Yeah, where the snow came I from. I heard he scored at Enfield from that particular thing. <laughs> uh, do you play football at all, John? Uh, I once upon a time I did. I don't do so much now, no. Do you want to no. just do a I, quick I, header for us while you're here? Yeah, sure, just yeah. To, just a quick, because this is... Do I head it to Roy or into the audience? Well, can, well head, head it to Frank. I would, I would, uh, I'll just edge your bets and say just Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Roy! Yeah, oh, hey. oh, yeah. well, you, you're wasted as a commentator, John. Well, I've been saying that for a long time. <laughs> Oh, do I not like that? Do I not like that? <laughs> you can't get over that, can you? I can't. I feel that the, the image of that documentary that will always live with me is Laurie McMenemy, who kept 
You can act on the bench moving slightly further away. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be Sailor saying to Phil Neal, I, I think I might bring... Uh, Sailor and Phil Neal going, yeah, good idea, boss. Brilliant, brilliant idea. And I think I might play, you know, Lee Sharp at left back. Brilliant idea. Brilliant. <laughs> and at one time, he, Phil Neal said, bold decision. <laughs> bold decision. <laughs> but you could see McMenemy was going, oh, dear. And, <laughs> and he suddenly turned to Laurie and said, do you think I should do that, Laurie? And he'd go, mm, if you like, yeah, why not? <laughs> Marvellous moment. Anyway, we're not going to go on about that all night, as much as we all loved it. This week, Phoenix from the Flames recreates perhaps the greatest footballing moment from 1966. Picture the scene. It's Wembley on a hot Saturday afternoon. Well, here we are. The magnificent twin towers of Wembley Stadium. 1966. Who am I then? Charlton, Hurst, Moore. What do you mean? You know, World Cup, 66, Alf Ramsey, swinging London, and down Carnaby Street, the skirts are getting shorter and the hair is getting longer. Who does he think he is in that cap? No, 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 no. you got the right period, you got the wrong game. I'm talking about the FA Cup final, right? Everton versus Sheffield Wednesday. I thought we'd do the fourth goal. So, uh, That would have been, uh, That would have been, uh, Well, who do you want to be? One of the players. Right. Everton? Yes, what would it be Mike Trevilko? It's the Mike obvious Trevilco, one. Mike Trevilko, of course. Okay, then. He was in uh, some sense responsible for the fourth goal, was he? Well, well he scored it. He absolutely responsible then. Yeah, okay, right. then. I'll be Ron Springit, right? The Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper. Right. Sheffield Wednesday have brought everybody back now. They have 11 men between the ball and their goal. Scott's going to take it there, you see. Harris moving up. Scott. Trevilco. A goal is in line. Mike Trevilco. Now the scorer of two goals at Wembley. Is that it? Well, here comes Eddie. Eddie? Eddie Cavana, the bloke that ran on the pitch after Trevilco's goal. <laughs> you know, the first ever football hooligan. Well, what are we waiting for? And two Everton supporters of Grace on the pitch. Are going to see no more of this game. And a great tackle. Bottles up the line. What are you doing? Hey? You just took me something there. What are you doing? For those of you not from the Liverpool area, Mr. Kavana's dialogue is available on Scouse Facts. <laughs> <laughs> you just took me up, is it? You got me cold. Let me try my Sorry, Mr. Cavana, excuse me. Can I pick it out? <laughs> You'll be on the policeman, all right? Right. Bloody you. No, 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 no. Look, he's an old man. He didn't exactly look young in 1966. <laughs> That's right. So he's a very old man now. So be gentle with him. Make friends with him. Something like that, all right? Okay, I'll be chatty. No, oh, Eddie, you must have seen a few good old Everton games over the years. <laughs> Lord, it was the best one I've seen in 1978. We beat the best of 6-2. <laughs> 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 Just leave it. What you Just leave it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful oh, man. Were you, were you at that cup I was final? there. You yeah. were there? I was Did you there. run on after him? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I would have killed all of them after that. <laughs> that was, I would have killed all of them after that. Do you know he game. came straight back in again? They chucked him out, the police, and he came straight back in at the next turnstile. Still a great FA Cup moment. Well, what's your favourite FA Cup moment, John? Um, well, I think 1972, uh, the first cup that I ever covered for BBC mm. television was Hereford Newcastle. Oh, I remember that fantastic moment in that. You know that. I think yeah. we've got, yeah, yeah. We've got that. Radford. Now Tudor's gone down for Newcastle. Radford again. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! Back for the scorer! Well, well, the reason it was so important to me was I was sent to that game because I thought it would be an easy win for Newcastle and it would be about two minutes of highlights at the end of the show. It was my first cup tie, you know. Right. But of course, Ronnie Radford stuck that goal in and then Ricky George got the winning goal and it was a shock result of practically of the century and it became the main match half an hour and Ronnie called it the goal. Of, it was called the goal of the season by the, by the viewers, but it was a goal of the 
lifetime for Ronnie Radford, and it was an important goal for me because yeah. it... Uh, Your big break. It was a break, yeah. And mm. it shows that, that uh, Ray Wilkins was wrong about to play football, you need a football stadium. <laughs> 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 that was just some farmer's field. Well, it was terrible, wasn't it? 1972. Terrible old mess the pitch was, wasn't yeah. it? Anyway, it is the uh, cup fever's hitting the country because tomorrow it's the fourth round of the FA Cup. So next week, wait for it, we're going to begin our fantasy cup competition. Now, as some of you might know, ours isn't the only fantasy league in Britain. There's over a thousand other fantasy leagues being run in offices and factories and pubs all over the country. Well, it's like Pathé News, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's the craze that's sweeping the nation. Fantasy football. Hey, Joe, who's that in your team? You paid how much for Alan Shearer? <laughs> <laughs> so next yeah. week, your fantasy <laughs> league team could be pitted against Roy's team or John's team. Or, or if you're very lucky, Mandy Smith's team. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, well, that's a postman. postman. We've had a load of letters, actually, this week, because we had the bright idea of actually giving you our address last week, and that helped. We had one here. This is a bit of a classic, I think. A bit highbrow for the show, but still. This is from a bloke called uh, Michael McSorley from uh, Beeston in Leeds. And it says, Dear Frank and David, wait for this, this week I asked two pertinent questions. Firstly, why do self-important press and television pundits denigrate and trivialise our national game to the point of reducing it to a mere parody of its own fashion machismo image? Tango <laughs> And secondly, who do you reckon has got the biggest knob in the Premier League? <laughs> John, you're first. Oh, yes, I mean, no, no. <laughs> it's a genuine letter. Absolutely genuine idea? letter. Sato's got no, the don't ask that, you. I don't want him getting a book out on it. We got another one just through. Oh, this is just the rhyme. Yeah, it says, Dear Frank and David, I get fed up of seeing clips of goals all the time. What about all the near misses? I was at Manchester United versus Leeds in 1971 and I saw a shot which, had it gone in, would have been one of the greatest goals of all time. Where's David? Uh, this was Brian Robson's debut for Man United, yeah. Yeah, and you see he managed to pick up an injury in 20 seconds. <laughs> let's see that again, it's absolutely marvellous. It is, let's, see, let's, let's just see, see that. 10 or 12 let's just see one more time. Look at this, marvellous. <laughs> actually, oh. actually, it's interesting because the, the, the stewards at this game were actually the people who were guarding Prince Charles this week as well. <laughs> the good Leeds United tackle on the first bloke. Yes, brilliant, yeah. Nearly ripped his Oxford bag, which would have been a disaster. <laughs> So anyway, it is up for the cup next week. When our guests will be Sue Johnston and Eddie Large. Thanks very much to John Watson and yeah, Ryan. Thank you very been much. Great. Thanks a lot for coming along, and thank you for all watching. Cheers. Good night. Night. If you want to write to us, our address is Fantasy Football League, P.O. Box 168, London, WC28, 9NX.